Two Days After Halloween, a small melee game show. Find Someone is back. It's a me. Four side fights the night he comes home. Let's go. Welcome to Four Side Fights featuring Faust, The Cheat, Practical Tass, and Mario from Nintendo. Citizens of Four Side, I'm Jack Zilla, and I know, number one, it doesn't matter how cool the Four Side Live trophy was if you forget it backstage. Number two, if we want to beat Nintendo, we have no choice but to get Jeff Bezos on the sticks. Number three, the Big House proved that Falco Forward Smash is a vertical kill move. And number four, Cody Schwab would have as many fans as Mango if he wore an eye patch. Let's go to each side. Does Punished Cody sweep Mango? Let's go to our first pundit, Jmook Defeater, Kant fan, and erstwhile Ontario Puff, Faust. Yeah, I think, great. Yeah, I agree with that. You should put on the, the eye patch? Yeah, I think you should go for it. Okay. It'd be a good rebrand. Yeah. Our yeah. next pundit is burning with jealousy for his friend Donkey. It's Funky Kong. Yeah, I do think uh, it would do the trick for him, but it is stolen valor from the BTS sketch W. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Uh, because they also suggest that Cody needed to do something different with his life. Yeah, they give him a soul uh, patch instead of an eye patch. <laughs> yes, that is... We're in the same territory, I hear yeah. you. Uh, if he uses the phrase analog to digital, he loses 10 points on site. It's practical TAS. <laughs> I think that the eye patch doesn't really work unless it's like a branded eye patch. He needs to like get like the advertising on there, he needs to get his sponsor on there, and then we're going to be talking. Okay, and finally, uh, his lawyers had uh, told me that they that he had to be on this one. It's uh, it's Mario from Nintendo. I think uh, I think this Cody Schwab does need the eye patch. I think it's got great mascot potential. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, you're going to think about the look. You're going to think about how the winner is represented, and if you don't have that that iconic thing, you're going to get left behind. Yeah, I hear you. And you know a lot of things about being iconic and uh, being a man. Thing? Come yeah, on. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty I know good. what I'm talking about. Uh, welcome to Four Side Fights. We've got three outstanding guests today and then one more who are going to act as pundits as I throw topic after topic at them. They'll give their takes. If they're entertaining or interesting, I'll give them points. If they're boring, repetitive, or patently unreasonable, I'll subtract. And of course, I can mute any contestant at any time for any reason. The player with the most points at the end is our winner. They get to take it to four side with the three losers as they uh, 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 we see exactly how their punditry translates to melee. I have no depth perception with this thing on. Let's get to our first topic. Uh, at the big house, Cody Schwab fell to Morse code in early top 64. He then made history, defeating Chango, the real thing, Faust here. Polish, none, Hungrybox, Amsa, Zane, Mango, and then Plup twice in Grand Finals. Has the success of young Mango Puff at Pound 3 finally been surpassed? Is this the greatest loser's run of all time? Who wants to take it first? I have some stuff that I, I thought about this. And I yes. think that uh, it doesn't overshad overshadow uh, Pound 3, mostly because I feel like even though the field is a lot tougher now, the rule set was a lot more against Mango at the time. It's more melee culturally significant, and I think, I think, and Cody also didn't uh, didn't have to play against the people he had lost more than one set against, except for Zayn. So he didn't have to play Jmook, and he didn't have to play Moki, who were probably his two hardest draws at that tournament outside of Zayn. Did Mango have to fight people that he lost to before? He had to play people he had never beat before. Okay. Hmm. Anybody That's else? That's the I'm problem. Seeing... That's yeah. the problem, and I'm going to say it. Mango was playing against plumbers and mailmen at pound three. Cody has been oh. out here iron sharpening iron against the best in the game. You have to say that Mango didn't had never you know lost or played against these people because that's how it was, right? They were so disparate that they never you know they never got a shot at each other. But these fuckers are playing each other all the time. And if you're going to be out here as a Mango fan arguing that, you know, Armada couldn't waltz back in here uh, and kick everyone's ass, you know, if we're going back to that logic from the Mango fans back when that little Twitter spat happened, then you have to say that 2023 is the best era of Melee that we've ever seen. And Cody uh, ran through uh, pretty much everyone that matters. Well, it's obviously logic real is Ken the Goat. 
<laughs> well, it's obviously true that it, it Mango from from the 2000s could not come and and win the Big House 11 with his Jigglypuff. I think when you that is missing kind of the point of the question. It's like what is the best losers run doesn't mean which would have been the hardest losers run to do. It means like what's the most important one, I think, or the one that's like more most iconic. Like it means more than just the level of gameplay. Melee right, so like what, is what do you make line. of this? What do you make of this? Well, if we want to get the hard stats in, if we want to get the hard stats in, obviously longest losers run of all time to win a major. Uh, But also the other hard stat that I think is important is the fact that I was there to witness it in person. I have no idea if pound three actually happened. And so just by that de facto, I have to give it to uh, Big House 11 because pound three, for all I care, could have just been a fever dream of all of you. I have no clue if it exists. We shouldn't like penalize Mango for PTAS not having object permanence. <laughs> he's he's well, doing some solipsistic shit. I feel like right Mango now. has punished the melee scene several times for his lack of object permanence, so maybe it goes even Stevens <laughs> there. <laughs> Mario, what do you think? Is, Ma- is it well, still the Mango puff run? You see, asking the question who do I think had the best losers run of all time? The O2 are watching this. You know, this is the difference between Nintendo and everyone else. We care about the person who's there who doesn't win. Which is more impressive? Losing once or the master who has lost a thousand times and keeps going? You know, the losers run that never ends. That to me is the greatest of them all. So, well, but in a particular tournament, a O Tour would have a losers run of one set and then it would immediately be ended, yeah? But, but in a lifetime of experience gained, who's walking away with, with more personal treasures than the person yeah. who's still striving all those years later? The one thing I want to come at you, Faust, about is I think the idea that it has to be sufficiently iconic. Uh, well, how much t- do we do things iconically anymore? Like, how much, how much time does it take for something iconic to cook? I think it depends, um, but there's already tons of like sets or tournament runs in the past two years that are considered iconic now. Mm-hmm. You know, it doesn't take uh, that long, and maybe maybe this opinion that Cody's is better will be vindicated in a year or two. Like uh, almost like how J Mook's Cinderella story is considered one of the best of all time now. Yeah. Um, but you know, like the fact that we're even having this argument, whereas something like J Mook getting second at Genesis uh, Genesis Eight. Um, Immediately, people were like, this is one of the best Cinderella stories, Cinderella runs of all time. Um, yeah, know. but J-Mook, J-Mook came... I think, I think that like that does preclude the ability for players like personal popularity or knownness <laughs> to prevent them from getting iconic runs because they're just like... But for the people that were watching Slippy Online, it's like J-Mook's run was great because mm-hmm. it was on LAN, but they weren't necessarily surprised by the skill. So there are certain situations <laughs> that allowed that to be iconic that Cody can't manufacture, or can he? I don't know. He needs the, he needs an eye patch, and then maybe he can he can there manufacture. I was gonna yeah. say he could create a new virus, but that works too. Let's move on to our next we'll, topic. We'll give him some media training. We'll we'll get <laughs> yeah, him savvy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, grand finals wasn't the only surprise at Big House. Donkey Kong Nation turned out huge uh, between June Bug. Uh, making it a pretty long, far in the back, and I believe there was also Mo, and then I didn't write down the third Donkey Kong player who did well. Uh, so that's all I got. And then a variety of upsets also swept the event. Uh, what was each of your biggest surprise at Big House, or impress me with what you think is the biggest surprise? I can start. Yeah, uh, please. I thought, I thought actually it was uh, doubles. You know, Zuppy Azzle winning doubles. I think Plup losing his first doubles tournament in like years and years that was like a shock to me and that was that yeah. was my number one surprise I'd who say. else was watching with you so that you've got this permanence thing going on <laughs> who are the other uh, witnesses i was i was sitting you know all alone on my own at that point uh i wasn't paying attention to any of the other people around me i might have been at the to desk juggle guy might have been there might have been not paying attention but uh as for as far as i can tell i was uh, soloing so it did happen. It did happen, though. Yes. Faust, do you have a fit of the biggest surprise? Well, the biggest surprise for me, I, like, I want to say I was super confident going into that tournament, but I think I did pretty well. <laughs> you know? Yeah, a little bit. Especially because the people 
who I was supposed to play, uh, were all really good against Puff already. Um, so I'm going to say that, because uh, Callball and Spark are really, really tough opponents for me, and I've never beaten either of them before, so. Yeah. Mm. And Jamie. Well, yeah, but it's like, I don't know. Like, I felt like that one is a little different, like... Walk me through uh, this, because this is surprising to me that that is, you're putting that as like, I'm hearing you put it in like a B tier below. You're like, yeah, J Mook was tough, but like, I did beat Cobble. And that was <laughs> well, pretty so the, cool. So the win, the win is better, but I felt like the other two were game five. And they yeah. were like a lot, like the entire time I was like kind of eking it by. Um, like, especially against Spark, I got destroyed the first game and barely won the second one. Um, okay. So yeah. Uh, Funky Kong, what was your big surprise at the big house? You know, I can't say I'm surprised by the Donkey Kong showing up. You know, it's it's just great genes, really. Uh, <laughs> I I think KJH is probably my biggest surprise. I mean, uh, mm. you know, just one of those players that's always uh, sticking around. You know, he goes away for a while. We kind of forget. And then he comes back a pubic hairs away from top eight in his own mm. state, really, is mm -hmm. how I would describe it. A yeah. very very close set. Um, one of so. the one of the thinner kinds of hairs, in uh, based on this analogy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. At least mine are that way. I, I don't know. As yeah, a, as yeah, a, yeah. You're as thicker on top, a little thinner on the bottom. I hear yeah. you. <laughs> it's just a Kong problem, Mario. What do you think? Bigger surprise. Well, when they had me, you know, strapped in like Clockwork Orange style, watching this nightmare unfold. What stood out to me was that it's called the big house when it should be called the big sterile concrete center. <laughs> you know, if Nintendo were to take over, we would have these lovely gamer re-education centers for all our tournaments. And, you know, we'd have, uh, they had therapy dogs. We'd have licensed therapists dressed as <laughs> players. Main. That might be good. <laughs> you know, imagine if you could yeah. talk to your main after losing a set. Yeah, and that that your character was like, well, I think you're mad at your father. Do you have a Do you have a top ten most in need of therapy uh, melee players in mind that Nintendo uh, has in their archives? Uh hmm. Mm. Well, Cody, he needs Hold to on. learn how let to me, brand let himself. Let me take off well, the glasses. Of this one, this one. Mr. Mario. If, I, if I see Luigi backstage in Detroit, Michigan, I'm kicking his ass. I tell you what, <laughs> it's over for that motherfucker. There, there will be different people dressed as that for that purpose but you got to be sure you're not beating up the therapist because that is yeah. that is a crime i'm going to there the will therapist. be people there you know so we, we get really it gamers got to get their range out their rage out yeah. so you know there will so be a go, go ahead, ahead. sorry oh, there will be a a a puff mascot there for you to choke slam through a table you know like uh there will be you know, a Pikachu that you can just kick over and over again. You know, we're we're prepared for any violence that that gamers feel the need to. We understand you guys. We get yeah. it. You know, Nintendo's vision. There will be uh, drywall sections. Everything. So the thing that surprised you the most was the sterility of the venue. What was the second? Th was there anything that surprised you like the second most? Um. You know, I really thought. I really thought people would have stayed for ultimate more. I thought that was, you know, <laughs> it's got the viewers. It's got, it's got the rivalries, yeah. the storylines, you know, yeah. I don't follow melee much, but games 20 years old. What are, what are people doing? You know, I thought like ultimate only came out five years ago. It's still hot and fresh. Yeah. I hear you. <laughs> Let's move on to our next topic. The big house was not without its controversies. The schedule for day two uh, changed relatively last moment, requiring several players to play one more unexpected set. One of those players was Zayn, who reportedly didn't have time to warm up for his set versus Amsa, and then he lost. Has Juggle Tyrant gone too far, or was this change worth it for the flow of gameplay we saw on Sunday? Okay, so as someone who, like, had to play that match, or not the extra match, but I, I would have had to play one more if I had beaten KJH that day. I thought people knew about this. Like, I feel like I knew about this change way before any of the top players did. So I think they just weren't listening, which is my <laughs> real answer there. Like, I feel like I knew this either that morning or the day before. Yeah. 
So yeah. Zane is just making up John's. He could have looked at the vet. Somebody could have told him he doesn't have a good. He doesn't have a good team around him that gives him these this information. Because mm -hmm. as someone who again eked their way into top twenty four, and I knew like how was I? How did I know? And they didn't. It's crazy to me. Yeah. Anybody else? What do you think? I think, uh, you know, we at Nintendo, we understand how distressing these schedules can be. You know, we're very finely in tune with the gamer's lifestyle. So we're proposing a solution of to avoid unexpected early or late matches. We're proposing one hour brackets where you play as long as you can for in that one hour, as many sets as you can. And then whoever has the most sets is the first place. And we yeah. think this would disincentivize stalling because you've only got an hour. What are you going to time someone out? That's eight minutes. You know, you got to keep going. You got to win more sets. Funky Kong, what do you make of this? I, you know, it would be a fun little speed run experiment. You know, how fast can you uh, can you whoop up? Uh, I do think that you know, as far as the the big house schedule goes, you know, you can always like communicate further ahead of time, and that'll help. But I do think there's something to what Faust is saying here. Like, you kind of have to, you kind of have to be ready for it. You know, it was published at least like a week in advance. Uh, you know, that's plenty of time to prepare yourself to play one set. And I think that schedule, there's actually a pretty good argument for it being better. Uh, you know, it is kind of annoying to have to wake up at 11 a.m., play one set, and then wait Who like can do five it? hours uh, until Who can you do play it? next with, with the top 24. So, uh yeah, I think I think this the schedule is better, and I think Zane probably should have just read. <laughs> yeah, practical tasks. Uh, I will say I thought I heard about the schedule change like reasonably early, but I also do want to say that it definitely says online that that uh, that set is not happening on Saturday night. It definitely does say it's happening on Sunday, so that was definitely a, a late term change. But I personally think. That like serious answer. I think it actually is better for for the uh, the stream and for the uh, for the players if they're ready, of course, because the Saturday night stream ends with a bunch of bangers, those uh, top eight qualifier sets, and then the players that win, you know, top player privilege, they get to sleep in that the, that the next day, they get to party that night, and then they get to you know shake off the hangover, come back for like two three p.m. for uh, finals. I think yeah. it's a win win. Something no, I will hard say hard. Mm -hmm. uh, is that I think um, the advantage of being able to show up late is uh, is nice, but I think um, it kind of sucks for that people have to play that long on Saturday. Um, so I'm thinking of like hypothetical nightmare situation here where you're playing doubles and you've decided you want to play doubles. You have to play from 11 until like 10, which is, yeah, it's like an 11 hour day. Um, which is totally possible if you have Saturday pools and you played doubles and you made you made top cut for doubles. Um, like a lot of the good play, like Cody and and Jmook decided that they didn't want to do it, but um, like I definitely even at the end of that day felt really really tired. Like I was super ready to go to bed by the time I had played my last set. Um, and also it creates a weird thing too because if you did it to top twenty four, uh, then the people and winners had to would have had to play two more sets uh, than if they had just cut it at top twenty four. All right, this thing is giving me a friggin' headache. Cody maybe shouldn't wear an eye patch. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's bad. Uh, yeah, that's an interesting point. And uh, and P this is this that's an interesting wrinkle because I thought I I was like, am I spreading misinformation? Did they tell the players? But if if you can't look at the website and get the most updated mm -hmm. information, I, I'm I yeah, it seems like there was a a viable path for Zane to have been a professional literate a person and still get misinformation on this. Um, and, uh, you know, you could arguably say that not preparing for Yoshi is a, a disadvantage for Marth. Um, Mario, you've been Perhaps. remarkably, like, defending players, like, gamers. I, I didn't know that was the official Nintendo position. I thought that you kind of thought of us as, as you know, kind of seedy scumbags. Where does the money This go? is the common mis misconception. We love the players. We're all about power to the players. It's Nintendo's motto. <laughs> Our hatred lies with the TOs. It's the fucking yeah. TOs who pull the puppet strings and Zane shows up late and, and someone has to play Donkey Kong at 11 a.m. All of these things, it's the puppeteers. It's the TOs in control. We want to give power to the gamers. We want to put you guys in charge. All right. 
That, I'm sure nothing has ever gone wrong when the gamers have led uh, uh, communities. Yeah, gamers, with guidance. With guidance. The big house had only one stream for melee matches this year, so I stepped up like Frodo from the Shire to carry my phone around all day to catch as many important matches as I could. Like Frodo on the slopes of Mount Zoom, Zaza versus SDJ, I became consumed with the fear of death. Is this a model that other tournaments should attempt to replicate, or am I right to believe that only I could pull off such a quest? You know, I I, I feel like I need to step in, because this has been, we've internally been discussing this nonstop. How do you get, you know, these games in front of the people? And what we've come to the conclusion is, you know, an IRL stream, one guy stepping up, it's not sustainable. Our proposed solution we hire a team of courtroom sketch artists for every set in top 24. Then, after that sketch is complete of, you know, a, a interpretation of the set, you hand that off to improv comedians and, and white freestyle battle rappers, and that's your commentary. We think this is a much more long-term sustainable solution than asking people to stand up, record, you know, find where the sets are just every setup sketch artist battle rapper or improv comedian right there and that's that's the solution anybody have a problem with this no, i mean i think like i, I do love me. keeping in in detroit tradition right you know when they played till i collapse at big house 10 that was top 10 hypest melee community moments for me uh you know so that's 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 definitely a good one but jack i, I gotta give you credit I think that was the most entertaining side stream I've ever watched, you know, mm. and maybe that's just, maybe that's just my bias peeking through, uh, you know, funky Kong, of course, a long time for side fights viewer. Yeah. Uh, but I, uh, I don't know, no shade to, you know, Alex 19 or hungry box, but I think that, uh, it was a more authentic boots on the ground, uh, man of the community sort of feel, which I, I appreciate it, but we I, should never do it again. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> as long as we can have like a professional quality quad stream and it's not a, yeah. a financial burden. But the thing would, is that side streams on Friday and Saturday are a money pit. I tell you what. So like the backup plan, why not Jackzilla? You know? Yeah. I, I do think there's a path for me to get money at the expense of other people and commentators yes. in this. Yeah. Yes. I, th I think the, uh, the microphones was a huge touch compared to other, mm. um, other okay. side streams like that, that I had watched before. Like I didn't watch the yeah. stream at the time, but watching the, the VODs back, um, yep. just like very, very, uh, like added a step to the production value that, most of the time you hear just a lot of weird ambient noise. It makes it like a sensory hell to watch one of those side streams. But I think you nailed it. Um, and I think the solution, uh, instead of hopefully never doing this again, is we sh should actually just fly Jack out to every event. And then he can do it there for... Oh my gosh. You know? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Give, you, give, you, give you points. I'm, I'm, I'm smashing <laughs> yeah. that plus button. You figured it out. Practical yeah. tasks. What do you think? See, uh, the cheat brings up really good point which is that these streams especially the the friday and saturday side streams do not make tos the millions of dollars that sunday makes them and they're just not nearly profitable enough for for the tos to justify using them and i personally think i personally think that that's based of them to uh switch to a model where the labor of of small people in the audience like jack and hungry box individuals can can you know rise up and and save the tos the thousands of dollars that they would spend on venue internet uh for the sake of a worse experience for the fans and mm -hmm. i think that's really smart of the tos a better experience. It's all about lining the pockets it's all about exactly. giving the tos that cash jack's yeah. viewership i i think the jack's viewership w arguably was better than what we could expect from it BTS was five thousand on zane versus <laughs> ossify and hovered between 1.2 and 4 and like 3k for almost everything else there's an argument to be made so are are we good. we're uh, i'll say we're a community that doesn't put our money where our mouth is, is ever almost and that's why at the foresight fights regional our quad stream will be locked behind a paywall <laughs> <laughs> a fundraising goal of course uh and if yeah, we hit yeah. it then we, we'd be glad to do it but do you want that melee community broadly we'll, we'll have to find out i think it depends on how much it costs right like if you could pay per view for like five dollars for the weekend or something like that's equipment was like 300 
And then once I have that, you just got to pay me to not, you know, shit or piss all day, basically. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, it's all about the money with you people. All of you no, well, politicians. It's about too, yeah. So how much, Mario, do you shit and piss every day? Well, you know, it depends on the day what they got me doing. When I'm, when I'm locked in like I was with this tournament, you know, just eyes, w eyes wide open. I'm, I'm holding it as long as I can, but inevitably, you know. All right, let's move on to our next topic. Speaking of the fear of death, Nintendo has reemerged from the void of despair to give new commandments. Thou shall not hold a charity ultimate event at your high school. <laughs> Nintendo has announced new rules around so-called community tournaments. Uh, that's ridiculous. They govern the quantity of attendees per day, sale of food and drinks at events, the prices TOs can charge are capped under these rules, which is almost certainly not legal, even if other parts of it can survive some kind of litigation. And the ability for TOs to even make a profit is regulated. If I make $5 profit on accident at hosting a community tournament, Nintendo requires that I give it back as an even rebate, evenly split to all attendees. Uh, panelists. How much of a threat are these new rules to the melee scene and the wider smash scene? I don't think uh, so. I think that the main issue with this is going to be enforcement. And I think it's like a lot of this is kind of at least my best faith interpretation of this is Nintendo covering their own ass like legally and IP wise. I don't think it's actually going to affect your like your average bar local. They're not going to send a cease and desist to to whatever. And maybe I'm ignorant of that. I also think that the like there's are workarounds to um like things like the uh the profit rule where you know because tournaments have to be run as non or not for profit which just means you have to pay out like a salary to the TO that would be the extra amount or pay out put it invest it back into the into the event in some way you like I there's a billion ways to prevent you from actually giving out any money but not appearance fees for players that mm -hmm. can't be part of it mhm mm which I wonder what is considered an appearance fee in that case. Like, does that mean, like, like pay? are you not allowed to pay for their flights? Or is it, like, a strict, like, cash infusion? Like, I don't know. I don't think we'll ever find out, yeah. actually. Yeah, I don't know. Practical tasks, what do you got? Uh, before I answer your question, I have a question for you. Um, how many points per Panda NDA violation do I get? Oh, oh, Ooh. I'll give you, I'll give you 20 for one. But if you're trying to like chirp that Panda was going to prevent all of this, you maybe like five. 20 is not worth it. 20 is not worth it. No, 20 deal. is not worth it. How much is worth it? Wait, let's barter. I, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, it's, it's, a, it's a hard okay, number to get okay. to. I'm thinking, I was thinking closer to 50. I was thinking closer to 50, to be honest. Okay, if it's really juicy, you could go for it, but that's that's your risk to take. I can't value something I haven't seen, you know? That's fair. Uh, I think I'll just take a loss. To me, uh, I think there's roughly, like, three sort of tranches of tournaments where, uh, based on their size, it, uh, it changes how they get affected by these rules. And you have the small locals, which obviously they're not going to have uh, enough manpower to enforce uh, any of this. There is the uh, the big guys who, for the most part, are already licensed on their own, and so it doesn't affect them. But the middle guys are the ones that are like the most freaking out about this. The ones that are, you know, growing, uh, seeing consistent uh, uh, attendee increases uh, year over year, and we're probably expecting to get uh, a knock from Mr. Nintendo, you know, uh, Mario's dad here, uh, within the next two-ish years. And those ones are the ones that are, I guess, going to be starting to speed run that licensing process uh, or deciding to uh, go down swinging uh, and see whether or not they can call Nintendo's bluff. Yeah. And funnily enough, the, the champion of these medium sized tournaments is going to be a large sized tournament, uh, which is Super Smash Con. And we are going to get to see firsthand whether or not Nintendo is uh, bluffing or serious about this by whether or not Smash Con lives or dies. Damn. Once again, they're putting Gimmer in the chair and saying, we'll shoot. Uh, we we got it out for that guy, let me tell you. <laughs> I do have one, one quick follow-up for you, for you, Brett Pitas. Uh, mm -hmm. who, who is the person wearing the hat that you're playing this show with right now? This is uh, a witch, so it's Bayonetta? No, 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 no. The other person. 
with the hat on that you're playing with. You said his name just a little bit ago. Mario. Okay. You said Mario, and I got I had to spot yeah. check if I needed oh, to yeah. set your score to zero. Yeah, well, uh, Canadian I see. Through Mario Lemire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, hey, I don't say Mario. <laughs> like <laughs> just a quick He's from a different part of the country guy. than I am. Uh, lives like none of you guys will make it on the Nintendo commentary block. <laughs> Can't even say my did. goddamn I name right. Did. It's too late. Good I Lord. got that dollar. Yeah. Uh Funky Kong, what do you think? Uh do you want the Funky Kong answer, or do you want the MikeyTheCheat.com answer? You know, you're giving me the mix around. Who are you? <laughs> I thought I was coming on here as me, Mikey. And you then were. my name's Funky Kong on the, on the Chiron. Well, so. I changed it when, when you said you were Funky Kong. You said, I am Funky Kong, like I am legend. Well, I said that because that's what the Chiron said. <laughs> Well, okay, I we're thought back. I was talking to my fellow employee this whole time. Yeah, this my, is... funky, my Funky oh, Kong God. answer, my Funky Kong answer is like, give me one night with my old college drinking buddy Mario, and this is all cleared up. You know, <laughs> <laughs> we'll fix everything. Uh, yeah, my Mikey answer is that. Uh, yeah, if they enforce what's on paper, it's incredibly fucked. No food or drink at tournaments. Are you kidding me? In what way is that enforceable or reasonable? I fucking, I fucking hate these clowns. I tell you what, it's, it's so fucking ridiculous and I'm so angry. And what I'm really scared of the most is that, you know, uh, there are so many things that we've done to Melee in the past five years to make it so sick, uh, you know, in a, in a number of different ways, mods, you know, whatever rule set changes. And I'm very afraid that that all starts to go away. And so we need to find ways to preserve the last vestiges of this. Uh, and unfortunately, it's going to come down to those medium-sized tournaments, some of whom are going to have to take a risk and see how far Nintendo is willing to go to enforce this. Uh, but I say come and fucking take it, you know, uh, until they drag my CRTs out of the venue. Uh, you know, I'm going to run Melee the way that I want to at my goddamn tournament. So yeah. we'll see how it goes. Mario, uh, balls in your court. <laughs> Well, you know, we're looking at this. This is a regime change, you know? This is, we had the <laughs> grassroots era. Now it's big Nintendo coming in. And so I think a lot of these changes are being, you know, purposefully mis misinterpreted. The food thing. We are going to bring in these wonderful pre-approved Nintendo-themed meals, Mario burgers, Luigi sodas, all within line of the pre-approved Nintendo nutrition pyramid. It's a lot. Of, it's a lot of bananas and mushrooms, and um, yeah. those are the two layers. It's on brand. Um, yeah. But you know, Flowers. gone are the days of thousand-person tournaments. Now, two hundred-person tournaments. You play for twenty minutes, get your meal, you go play a, a fifteen-minute demo of Mario Wonder. You know that you could go to a Best Buy and play. And uh, that, bam, there it is. That's your, that's, you know, we want you in and out in two hours. Who wants I'm, to go to a tournament for three days? I'm starting to understand. You have been listening to the top player complaints for years. You've synthesized them and you figured out the only tournament structure that can answer all of the complaints of the top players. You see, people complain about the long days, the bad hours, travel we won't even let you into a tournament if you're coming out of state you know these are you know we have the california Wait, tournament is that one on the on the list it will be we're a future update you yeah, know sure. that was that was the beta test yeah um but yeah we're we're listening to everyone we want what's best for everyone so short tournaments pre-approved prepaid meals you know you don't need to get a hotel. You're, you're going to be gone in 20 minutes. So I'll put this to the whole group. How much do you think we can be protected by parity law? Because I'm about to gamble, you know, a lot of money in a relatively financially unstable part of, you know, period of my life on parity law. Is this going to work? Yeah, you just say it's just a prank, bro. Look at the camera. And then, all the, then you're scot-free. Uh, I think we can definitely do that. Fair use has always been you know, flexible legally. Um, and, you know, worst comes to worst, we can have all of our tournaments in, like, some random island in, in the Pacific where IP law doesn't apply anyway. 
Jack, I got to tell you, this all hinges on you. You better get your sister a good Christmas present because it hinges on how many pro bono hours she's willing to yeah, contribute yeah, yeah. to this cause. Yeah. And and I think it's important to parody law to establish yourself as a comedian. And that will be a challenge because our, our forte is more in is not necessarily in being funny so you far. Can, you can retroactively change my Mikey answer to the Funky Kong answer to that end. So Yeah, okay, okay, yeah. thank you. Something we're, I, we're I, pretty I like confident. Uh, we're we're pretty confident here in Nintendo. The second these gamers step into that beautiful GameStop and see all of the wonderful amenities we've provided you're gonna forget all about smash con big house you're not gonna care because we got we got mario wonder we got mario kart 8 again you don't you don't need these brackets yeah you don't wait, need why these. are you re-releasing mario kart 8 and but you're mad about melee still being played <laughs> You know, that's a higher up decision. Uh, <laughs> all right, all right. Another potential know. loss. Let's move on to our next topic. Another Wait, potential loss to see with these new rules is one. online events. Oh, did somebody just talk? I didn't get my answer in on that one. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Please go. Uh, oh, shoot. What was I going to say? You, you uh, like baited is, me uh, with this like <laughs> NDA shit. <laughs> no, uh, no, that was the previous question. Oh, I think. One more no. thing. Parody law. It just was before the we move on. Question. Parody law, yeah. The, oh, sorry. The, the NDA stuff was not parody law. Parody law, for, like, it's a tough sell, the parody law stuff, because I really, really uh, don't think it's going to work because the last time we tried it, um, that was Project M, and we all know that Project M just got taken behind the barn and uh, put down. No, no, no. No, no, no. So they didn't execute it right. So mm. you got to do better than they did. Okay. Oh, we executed PM. Right. It starts for it starts. I'm for, listening. It stands for parody. Tell me what PM did wrong that I will do better. They they weren't preemptive enough about it. They they did not have anywhere on their site in their code that said it's just a prank, bro. They did not have any proof that they uh, were admitting to uh, you know violating all of the parody stuff that you need to violate in order to be legally qualified as a parody, mm -hmm. and. You need to get out ahead of 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 Mario. You need yes. to get it uh, in advance, and then you got a better shot at it. He's got the blue shell, though, bro. That's when that's when you got to pick up that horn. Mm, I got I mushrooms. Know. I got the blue mm. shell. I got bananas. I got everything. You'll never get away from me. So, red hat over here saying, "I got the blue shell. It's okay. We got we got the horn, and we're around it. You know what I'm saying? We're already we're already baiting ESPN every single day here. But I am sure that if Tony Reale saw what he was doing, what we're doing here, he'd be taking notes. Okay. Uh, let's move on to our next topic. Another potential loss for the scene with the new rules is online events. Uh, Galint still seems to be planning to run events, and Hungrybox vowed to continue Coinbox until uh, they came and took it. But then he maybe kind of sort of backed off that promise a little bit in the days to come. Uh, maybe some lawyer said, well, you know, it might not we be that one. easy. Uh, we got <laughs> Coinbox is consistently, at least for me, the best melee that you can watch outside of tournaments. And it's bi-weekly. It's consistent. Uh, I feel like it's even been growing in viewership. Can we replace it? Uh, do we think Nintendo is bluffing on canceling online tournaments if they don't make too much noise? Can we just be really quiet about it? And then it's fine. Well, I think I the think... solution is Dev DevDog just says that they're flying all these players out to their basement to play every mm. Wednesday. So why? You know, yeah. but not lying. It's parody. My bad. My bad. Yeah, Quick it's track. just parody. It's just a prank. Yeah, there we go. We're, we, we got it in advance. We, we're, we're legally covered now. We're good. I think that uh, the online sphere is basically going to be a bit of an enforcement zone. I think uh, speaking as someone who has uh, both melee and ultimate side knowledge, uh, attempting to sacrifice melee coin box in order to save ultimate coin box when the real reason why coin box is going to get exploded, which is the uh, crypto uh, sponsorship, uh, I think it's not going to work. I think it's going to backfire, and Nintendo will leave HBox in license hell until they decide yeah. to rain brimstone and fire so down. On my it. understanding was that you can't offer crypto as a prize, not that crypto can't be a sponsor. Is that un uh, incorrect? Somebody needs. All right, to I'm going to need those tomorrow. twenty points. I'm going to need those twenty points right now. Uh, <laughs> I'll, crypto I'll is definitely a hundred percent banned as uh, a sponsor. Well, well, 
that wow. it kind of depends on how far they're willing to go with the enforcement, right? Again, like we know that for Nintendo licensed tournaments, crypto is not going to be allowed, but for non-licensed tournaments, like uh, who knows? But again, it's online and they're going to draw the attention. And to Jack's question, I do think that it is kind of a disaster, unfortunately. Um, you know, the community so far has kind of proven that, well, we've had trouble making up for big sponsorship money, let's just say. Uh, you know, since the sort of uh, Panda stuff and the Papa John's deal went away. We haven't really been able to fill that void. And T and TOs have been working on, a, you know, a bit more of a shoestring budget this year. So I don't really know how that fixes itself for online. Um, and that's pretty big to Coinbox because really the big thing about Coinbox is the money. You know, that's the entire reason why it's the biggest online melee tournament. Why Cody Schwab gets out of bed every day. Why Spark goes and collects his, you know, $400 every week. Uh, you know, yeah. so uh, to me, it's a pretty big problem. Yeah. Mario, why are you doing this to us? I just Well, so game. we we understand how devastating the potential loss of online tournaments can be, but we have a plan. We're planning on replacing these events with productive, fun community events that you know, encourage a healthier lifestyle. So, instead of getting timed out cross country connection versus a puff, how about both opponents Call their dads and tell them they love them. And whoever can do that more times in eight minutes walks away the winner. You know, we want to introduce events that make a healthier life for our players. And then when they go to the tournaments, they know that their dad knows they appreciate them. And in the case of a missing dad, we will have Nintendo representatives available to role play. We've, you know, we're not leaving He's you guys in the face. dust. Mario, when was the last time you called your dad? Well... He's been a long now. time. He's not around he was, anymore. He was but in the movie. God, <laughs> God damn that Nintendo representative does a good job. Why don't you? Why, okay, if you if you ever find the time, why don't you call him up? I'd love to hear that conversation. Yeah, uh, this is a similar here. thing. Yes, uh, with it's kind of like online, but kind of not. I think honestly, the bigger hit if we can't get away with it is going to be just like general tournament mods, and I don't even mean. Uh, like Frozen Stadium or something like that, but not being able to run slippy mirroring. And also, I know not a lot of people are thinking about this, but how are PAL tournaments going to run, or tournaments in Europe going to run if they can't mod the game to make it NTSC? Like, that is going to be really tough for them. Just do it. Just, Just do, do it. it and then yeah. hope, because, Just like, especially big European events, like I'm thinking Archimele or, like, Fate or whatever, you know, that's going to be... Nerf Fox again. Bring it back. Hey, I'm all for it. I will go move to Europe if they switch back to PAL. I will get my Dutch passport. I have a response to that. <laughs> yes. I think the goal of the licensing process isn't to uh, have all these community tournaments just run around under this community license. I think the goal is to speedrun getting as many uh, like mid-sized to big events licensed as possible. And then when you're in Nintendo's DMs, you can... Uh, you can discuss terms and you can, you know, if you're in Europe, you can say, hey, we've got three billion uh, Wii's that are totally running legitimate ISOs of NTSC Melee. Uh, can we run, you know, the real version of Melee and not this fake European version? Hey, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, you have to lie to them, to be clear. I do not yes. think you should ask them if you can run UCF or Slippy Mirroring on your No, Please. just NTSC, just <laughs> NTSC. Please. You know, we've got, Nintendo has a solution. I don't think you guys are going to like it. Which version can we play? Smash Ultimate. That's the version you can play. Ooh. Yeah. My uh, warrior is nasty. That's rough. All right, let's move on to our next topic. Uh, oh, it, the, the hits just keep coming. New regulations have been announced, doing a variety of technical things to digital controllers and modded GameCube controllers, uh, firmwares, to nerf their capabilities. I've never understood any of this, so we brought on practical tasks to talk about it. How do we feel about the process by which these nerfs came to be, and should TOs adopt them? Uh, I guess I can start. This is what I'm here for. Uh, I have been working on these rules for two and a half years now. Um, this actually started as an initiative uh, led by Nintendude. Uh, may he rest in peace. He's in a, a better place now. You know. Chess.com. He, he's dead? No, he's in a better place. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Good. It's, it's not a euphemism. 
He's just in a better place. And uh, I basically carried on this uh, this work because I figured that if I wasn't going to do it, nobody else was. I was not able to pawn it off on anybody else. So I uh, collected a team of the Avengers and put together a list of rules and regulations for both boxes and uh, goom waves and uh, have, you know, socialized that to the tournament organizers, have brought on uh, box players to test the nerfs. Uh, some of them are happy, some of them are unhappy, uh, as is to be expected. But we have, you know, a full justification for all of the, the rules as written, and we believe that uh, it's in TO's uh, best interest to uh, to do so, to, to, to implement the rules for 2024, at least. That's uh, what I would say and what I did say at the big house. However, it turned out at the big house, we get there. Top 64 has as many Donkey Kong players as it does uh, box mains. Wow. And so now I'm wondering, maybe we need to worry about the Donkey Kong players more than the boxes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's very kind of based, actually. No, I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> So what what do you expect to happen after these nerfs go through? What 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 will what 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 happens? I think that uh, box players will fight tooth and nail to prevent these from coming into place. I already hear about it, and which is in their right, and I think they are right like right from their perspective to do it. I know I wouldn't want my controller nerfed if I was playing on a controller like But that. hasn't like every top one hundred box player been in support of the nerfs? No, definitely not. No, or not every Swift in support. Yeah, Swift so is in support. Uh, Joey Donuts is mixed. Gatsu is is mixed, but understanding. Uh, I would say in general, uh, it's a definite mixed bag. Um, but there's a lot of like, a lot of uh, not necessarily support, but like you know we can deal with this. That's the best mm -hmm. way to put like the more positive people. It's like it's yeah. a nerf clearly overall, but uh, in general it sands off the like most uh, oppressive best edges of the controller yes, very while leaving uh, the ability to play melee. Yes, we are being oppressed. Faust, you, it's, but you think the rank and file box players are going to agitate and, and get heads rolling. Well, I was in a, I was in a Discord call with two, two box players today, and they were arguing about how some of the, the changes are maybe too much. Uh, yeah. And, and these are, I'm not going to name names because that would be impolite, but these two players are both pretty good, like top could be top Gotta 100 level. Them. Gotta players. name them. On okay, this you show. want me to? Okay, sure. I don't like this. It was, I don't like it this. was Dark Hero and Sika. Both, I was, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they were like, the pivot lockout is too, is too difficult. I was mm -hmm. like, okay, I guess, like, I don't know. <laughs> I guess so. Um, but yeah, if, if I had a, a rule set change affect me, like it's been proposed against, uh, against Puff for the past year and a half or two years, I would have been like, years. yes, we should fight it. Absolutely not. So I think they're fight, they'll fight against it and they'll probably lose, but they, they should fight against it as long as they can. Mikey, what do you think? Yeah. You know, I won't pretend to be smart enough to know whether the minutia of the, the changes and the nerfs is really going to, uh, you know stick i guess or be something that box players coalesce to but i do think it has to happen right and i think that generally one of the things that i was uh, pleased to see about it was the fuzzing because the one thing that i always had in my mind about box controllers is that pushing a button and knowing exactly what angle you're going to hit is something that changes your decision making uh to the extent that it's always going to be cheating right like for instance i'm backed up into the corner i want to wave dash out I know, I know that if I fuck up this angle, I'm going to air dodge off the stage and die. Box players never had that problem. You know, they're going to hit the angle right every time. Now Not that me. <laughs> <laughs> the skill issue. But the thing is, it, it's in the back of your head, right? The other thing is, what is, what is it really about, box players? That's what I want to know. Because to me, the only compelling argument for even allowing the controllers in the first place is accessibility. You shouldn't yeah, be most using people who play Melee, if, if you just want to download Melee on your computer with a legal ISO and play Slippy, and the most accessible way to enter Melee as a completely fresh player is to be a keyboard player, right? That's how I actually started playing uh, Project M on my laptop, was on a keyboard. Yeah, that's crazy lore. So, yeah, and hand, hand problems, right? Which, I don't know, mm, this, yeah. I, I haven't seen the science on that shit, but... Yeah, Nintendude uh, <laughs> is, a, is a skeptic, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, who knows, really. But I'm saying that I think that, man, unfortunately, really, the time has passed where we could just do away with it altogether, which is honestly what I think was the right thing to do. 
but I think we're on the right track and I think this is good and I will be implementing it. Yeah. Mario, bring us home. You know, if you guys had just waited, we could have got this perfect. Now, I'm a little hurt. I feel like we at Nintendo put out so many options for players. We got bongos. We got keyboards. We got hoary pads. We got all of these options you guys could have picked. But no, you had to make your own controller. And we get it. You know, the, the, the Rubicon has been passed. So we are internally developing smash specific rectangles and controllers that fall in line with what is a reasonable rule set by shocking players who activate too high of an apm that's our solution we're going to give you all of your options we're going to let you hit all of the broken angles you could possibly dream of but one tick over 200 you get a little jolt you got to come back to earth for a second that's our Mario. proposed solution. you forced our hands here Mario, I have a question. What's the interest rate on the Kickstarter money that I'm going to be inevitably refunded <laughs> because of this? No Kickstarter money, but it will be fatal if you do an illegal combo. It will just <laughs> instantly kill you if you do it like too good of a super wave dash. Oh, shit. Hmm. So super wave dashes are, are, are gone. Oh, they're players out. In shambles. Okay. They're out. The go. Pretty much every, the anything a floaty does, that's out. Oh, you know, there okay. is one. Well, wait, we're listening to the community. We know oh. what you guys want. Yeah. Fox only mm -hmm. final destination. Anything else? Zap. Amen, brother. Amen. We're that. listening. Hey. We're listening. Yeah. Luigi Nair, instant death. You're out of there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Finally. I just I just want to point out it's actually uh not possible to ban every box because there is actually one uh officially licensed nintendo legitimate box and that is the fantasy star online uh keyboard gamecube controller and what so did I say? we could, we just, have a we could just get rid of everything else and make everybody get those what? hey why can't we ban it <laughs> has that boot taste in his mouth he can't even remember officially licensed what it's like to can't think be like banned. a free man no, what you, why? Pan, panda nda violation right there you can't ban officially mm -hmm. licensed panda, controllers. panda boot nintendo boot whoever's feeding the witch is gonna is gonna be protected by the nda i hear you uh, the other solution here is if they bring the fantasy star controller you just get to hit one of their fingers with a mallet before you're set. Ooh. You know, and then and then it's fair. You're you're all hungry for violence. Uh, oh, I will against say this players? Oh, yeah. I'm out of peace. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's move on to <laughs> let's move on to our next topic. That's pretty much related. Um, if tos do decide to adopt these changes, as Mikey has already committed to, do we officially enter an era where it's not cool to call digital controller players cheaters, or is the does the scene need? someone to bully do we stay on them just so we have someone or do we move on to the next group i think we still bully them because they'll mm -hmm. be complaining about the changes and then you just hit them with that you bought into like the meta deck if for all the card game people and now it got banned and now you're sad about it like, like loser <laughs> <laughs> so we move from cheater to loser yeah oh the ice climbers path i see yeah oh <laughs> Vitas, what's your position on this? Oh, Do we need man. someone to pull in? See, this is this is hard because I I I worked a very long time to to prevent the case where we still bully them afterwards. Because on the one hand, we had the, you know, we need to keep everything, you know, legal because, you know, accessibility, et cetera, et cetera. On the other hand, we were also balancing, you know, the we just need the like the the uh the either funky kong or or cheat uh opinion which is we just need to ban the boxes altogether and so we needed to balance that and we need to get to some you know middle ground where nobody was happy why did and you need i think to balance we hit it? that why didn't you just make the best decision that you could think of to minimize the bullying right because oh, if we go okay, too okay. far if we go too far then then the box players uh uh are getting bullied for being losers and we don't if we go not far enough then they're bullied for being cheaters so we so had to is find that, that is you know, that perfect like the, the core ground. of this rule set is well we can't ban them because that would be too mean even if the people that are in, tournament organizers believe that that would be better for their events yes yes absolutely because okay. the like two or three people that need them for like accessibility because they their hands hurt um we can't ban those people we would just get you know sued by mario's dad yeah, so, that actually is a protected uh, yeah, class. 
Yes. Yeah, so, so we have to we have to leave some some level of uh, accessibility in there. So, okay. no, my my whole my whole stick here was, uh, you know, we got to minimize the level of bullying. We don't need to bully anybody else. All right. So that won't work. Uh, who do we bully next? <laughs> Funky Kong. The tos. <laughs> the tos. Is it back you to know, basics? That's what Is we're it... about. We're gonna be the new tos. You can bully us. We can take it because we're bringing in billions a year. We don't care. Watch your own pocket, bro. We're making money. You're entering our tournaments. We don't give a shit if you complain. Damn. <laughs> that might be the future. Mikey? Yeah, I'm pocket watching. Uh, as Slime said, these are the people who I would sell weed to for $80 in the parking lot of my high school and then double back for the car stereo. You know, <laughs> you, you, know you, you, you lost out on this one. You have to hold that L forever. And it's going to be embarrassing, but you'll deal with it. I think we should bully top players. I think they've had it too good for too long. Let's move on to our next topic. Yeah, let's move on to our next topic. Uh, top players and Edwin Budding are buzzing that this is the closest race for first in Melee history, at least the history of rankings. With it seeming unlikely that Cody and Zane will both be in attendance to play seriously at either DreamHack or Santa Paws, this begs the question, are Cody and Zane quiet quitting Melee so they can tie for first and hold their hands as they walk into the sunset? Well, Cody's going to yes. Archimele and Santa Paws. But Zane is not. But Zane isn't. So this yeah. question shouldn't be about Cody, then. It should be about... The question it's was, it's unlikely that Cody and Zane will be in attendance. Mm -hmm. And I don't think Cody winning those events is going to suddenly be like, well, Zane should have gone. Guess that race is over. I don't think that that's the general feeling that people have. If I think that if he beats Moki twice at Archimele and turns that losing record into a winning record, that's actually probably a good point in Cody's favor that could tip the scales, because it's that close. Okay. Yeah. So you think the race is still open, and the, and the solution is not for Mo Cody and Zane to fight, but for Cody to fight Moki? Yeah. Okay. It, it, if Zane won't show up, that's like the main way that I... Because th I think it's really close, but I think most people, at least from what I've heard, are standing sticking with Zane. Oh, I'm hearing that Cody... Player. My source in the chat is telling me Cody is refusing to play mains. He's going to go chic and get drunk. He told me he was going to go Fox and maybe have like a drink, but not get drunk. So I like, I don't know. That's what yeah, I'm last I've heard. For sure. Um, yeah, yeah. If he goes chic against me, he's going to lose. So I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Practical task. What do you think? I think, I think, yes, they are quiet quitting for the year. And I think that that's actually quite based because here's why us melee nerds, the melee stats guys, me and my homies, you know, e tossed, we are all terrified of top players secretly because at the end of the day, the only reason why we have any semblance of clout in this community is because those guys are too lazy to get off their asses and do something. They're too lazy to unionize, they're too lazy to make their own rankings, and they depend on us for that free labor. And if these guys decide to get together and say, you know what, we're gonna tie, and we're gonna just leave it at that until they, those guys are forced to make a decision, they have the power to just, you know, undercut us, you know, make their own top player rankings. They can just put that together yep. and say, oh, no, we're going to pick based on, you know, our top six events. And we have no ability to counter that. So I think it's based on them to try finally, because yeah. now that I'm not in charge of the rankings anymore, I can say this. I can say that that the, the hegemony yeah. of the melee stats uh, nerds hegemony, can yeah. be can be finished, it can be over. None of them will ever so do is, that. Uh, yeah, a Andrew Jackson <laughs> says, show me, give me that Wheats army, right? <laughs> exactly. This is an American reference. I'm not sure if they teach about uh, Supreme Court, like justice dynamics with 19th century <laughs> early presidents in Canada, but, uh, no, but it's, I it's, do a re know it's relevant that. here, I promise. <laughs> uh, Mikey, what do you think? Yeah, I don't really, I don't really care. <laughs> there was one really nice video at the Olympics where a dude from Qatar and a dude from Italy joint won gold medal in the high jump competition and then had a had a big old celebration together and it was very cute and I would love to see Cody and Zane do that. So that's my stance on the issue. Very cool. Mario, give us your bullshit. Well, you know, <laughs> uh, well, I don't know if I'd call it that, but 
<laughs> we're here personally. We're thrilled at the prospect of of top players no longer competing. Because that at the end of this all, that's what we want. We want you to feel the hands on your neck every time you enter a tournament, which is what the ranking periods has always served to do for top players to feel that stress, that that restriction of airflow as they can't breathe to get first place, you know? And so I think Cody and Zane, they're at the point, there's no point to compete anymore. Whatever's going to happen, happens, and it only serves to potentially lessen their value. Yeah. So we're thrilled about what, what's happening right now. Okay. Uh, this next question uh, is going to require an image. I will put it in our... Uh in our chat, if I can find it real quickly. Um, but it is hopefully an image that you are all familiar with. If we could get it on stream real quick, uh, JD. Uh, the question is, how snatched will Leffen be when he wins Tekken Evo? Yeah, a snatched mother, slay the house, boots down, Houston, I'm deceased, etc. cetera. Uh, probably gonna be dating Travis Kelsey within the year, you know, if we're being honest, so. Uh, I can't wait. But the thing that I really want to see is when, when, what, I think one Evo, where was the fucking noise? You know what I'm saying? It was crickets. It was like Hungry Box at the Big House 7. We oh. need to travel as a convoy and get for fucking rowdy five. for Leffen when he wins the, uh, when he wins Tekken. Yeah. In Saudi Arabia. Oh, yeah. He's taking the MBS money for sure. That's right. <laughs> Faust, how snatched is Levin going to be? I'm, I'm not. I'm going to level with you. I don't even know what that means. Uh, <laughs> disappointment. That's a disappointment. See you on the next episode. Uh. Practical tasks. What do you got? I mean, all I know is that he's going to be on fleek. That that's all I can say. So that's like twenty twenty fourteen. <laughs> a little outdated. I'll give you, you one point say, for, for, for the effort. For the you effort had to here. say he was serving something. What would it be? You know? I, what I is he cannot serving? legally say that term. This term that's in <laughs> my head right now. Oh, wow. Tori told me to say that term in, in her ear at, at Big House, and I did not say it then, and believe, I will not say it now. Not, that's oh. also that's also Panda That is not NBA. what she asked you to say, and I know that you <laughs> yeah, have to she that in the context of <laughs> serving, okay? I know what's going on here, all right? Mario, what, what's going on? Is Luffin serving? How's that? Well, I can't be? Say, well, I can't reveal the internal, the full internal dialogue we've been having, having at the office. I will say we've got that picture up in the break room. It is causing a severe disruption to workflow. We have not got shit about dick done since that picture came out. It's rough over here, dude. We're delaying every game by like six months off that picture alone. Also, uh, so am I crazy? Or does nothing even play Tekken? Am I? Making he said he's that gonna because he's sick okay. of melee, and Tekken yeah. has a scene in Europe. He's okay. not sick of melee; it's just hard. Yeah. No. Okay. Okay. I missed that part. I thought it was. I thought this was. He was still on his guilty year arc, but I guess not. Yeah. It, I mean, it could be both. Once you win Evo on on two games, you kind of are like, why don't they just mm -hmm. do a third one? Yeah. I think it's like a language. Going, yeah, yeah. All right, let's move on to our final topic. In a YouTube video, Moki was not excited that the ranking period will functionally end with a charity tournament for dogs, Santa Paws, and suggested that instead the ranking period should end with Genesis. Aiden Calvin plus one the idea. Several other people have been supportive. Moki was clear that he was not advocating for an off season and suggested that it was better for the events just after Genesis if we set the season end at that point. Do you agree with Moki? And is it possible for Full Bloom to avoid the asteroid of being set a week after Genesis by marketing itself as the first event of the new season? Well, I think that if you put it at the end, it kind of defeats the name, right? It's called Genesis because it's the beginning. Like that, that's kind of the point. Holy shit! Um, aesthetically, <laughs> <laughs> that's awful. If you make it the end, you'd have to change it to to Revelation Revelations. or something. Yeah, Revelations. if you did that, Genesis it goes. X is the last that's one. Scary. Yeah, scary <laughs> but otherwise it doesn't go. Revelations. But it's every ending you. is a beginning. Oh. And every beginning is an ending. No, no, no. Mario, are you a Catholic? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. I need to know. Oh. 
He is Italian. Statistically. Tass, what do you think? Did oh, we change okay. the ranking period? Why didn't you do this in, in your reign as, as, as ranking uh, czar? See, the only issue, the only real issue that, uh, that nobody's brought up yet about changing the ranking period is the question of what do you label it, right? Because right now, this year's rankings are going to be the 2023 rankings, right? And then if we include the Genesis in 2025 in the 2024 rankings, is it going to be the 2025 rankings now? Is it going to be the 2024 rankings still? And then there's just going to be a handful of 2025 events in it? There, there's, there's no possible way to resolve that issue uh, that doesn't make a million people unhappy. I don't know. And the so... The just Super Bowl is in February, and we all just call it by the previous year. It's not a problem, I don't think. Well, they're just yeah, numbers. Game of the right? year, number it. Game of the year was due just December. December. They go into yeah. the previous year. Here's, here's you see, there's answer. no way to solve this that doesn't make this half the community unhappy. It's We're all happy. unhappy. <laughs> Here's my, I, here's my answer. I'm a big fan of democracy, right? And I think all these ideas are fine and good. And I think uh, my solution is to just put everything to a vote. All these requirements, treat them like ballot initiatives, you know? If you want to propose a ballot initiative, get enough signatures to get it on the we uh, the desk of Gimme That Wheat. And I think he'll like this too, because not so mm -hmm. much of that decision-making onus is going to be on the czar, as you call it. No more czars, no more gods, no more kings. We're we're the people, and we're gonna vote on the rankings collectively. And that's I think how we're the idea do that Gimme That Wheat wants to cede power to the to the huddled masses is it d does not strike me as accurate. But uh, perhaps seen, we need to try. Have you seen his private Twitter account? Clearly, it's weighing on him. You know, <laughs> and I think that we need to alleviate that a little bit through my favorite form of governing democracy. Yeah. Democracy. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. I think I hear another, you. Oh, another thing that's really important is the summer ranking stops existing. Basically, if you Based. shift it forward, it, which I think a lot of people like that. It's maybe not relevant past like when the full year ranking comes out anymore, people stop talking about it. But in that middle of the year, it drums up hype. It gets people to go to events at the beginning of the year that aren't just Genesis. I agree. The shock value of Mango getting 11th wore off, you know? There's only so many times we can print that headline. Well, it's because he got third at the end of the year and probably yeah. should have been second. Dewey yeah. defeats Truman for sure. Probably should have. It was point on. Uh, Mario, yes. So we keep talking about, oh, we got to go in this direction or that direction for the ranking. Our proposed solution, 365 rankings per year. Every day, a new list. Non-stop. You're always getting takes. You're always getting content. That's what we want. <laughs> we want to live in this endless cycle of debate. And it's not, but it's not up for debate, to be clear. It's, but not, it's not up, up for, for yeah. debate. It's not up for debate. <laughs> it's never up for debate. But we're yeah, always debating. We're always I know debating. just the guy for this. I know somebody who can run this beautifully. So there's yeah, two yeah, people. I, we're, we've tapped two people. We can't say who. <laughs> oh, no, well, we, got, we two name names here. Oh, we do names here. Thank you, Faust. Okay. Uh, Nintendo, Squeak and, Nintendo, uh, Nintendo loves Cantrip. I'll tell you what. Yeah, we love that guy. <laughs> <Nintendo> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We love what he's doing with, with Donkey Kong's iconography. <laughs> We're huge fans. <laughs> All right. This is a very close race. Uh, I was not expecting Mario to do so well. Last time you ended with a record of zero. Uh, but somehow this episode, you've been, you've charmed me. Uh, despite all of our, our enmity, I think, you know, uh, you're, I'd like to get a beer with you. Um, Same. But right I'll now, the cheat, really, hey, the, the cheat is in the lead. Faust is in, in the lead as well. Practical task, Mario, if you really knock this question out, this tiebreaker, you might be able to bring it back if the cheat and Faust uh, biff it. But this is what it comes down to. We ready? All right, our tiebreaker. How many bugs can you eat? I spend my entire summer canoeing. I can eat so many bugs. Like, I spend my entire summer out, out in the wilderness probably eating a ton of them. So, okay. so many is my answer. So many is the answer. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I once counted, and there are 348 distinct known bugs in Super Smash Brothers Melee. And if I put that on a small enough thumb drive, I can eat all 348 of them. Well, that's nothing. 348 on the thumb drive. A little cowardly, but okay. Mikey? I'll, 
again, do you want the Funky Kong answer or the cheat answer? Bro, decide who you are. I can't decide for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the answer is none now that I have a CPAP machine that blocks spiders from crawling into my mouth while I sleep. <laughs> All right. And Mario, how many bugs can you eat? Any of you guys play Mario Wonder? Any of you guys play uh, <laughs> Tears of the Kingdom? Pretty smooth games, huh? That's how many fucking bugs I can eat. You play a game start to finish, nothing bad happens. That's how many fucking bugs I eat. All right. <laughs> Shit. Uh, well, that almost was a winning answer, but the truth is, Mario, you were never in it. You're our fucking enemy. Fuck you. Fucking fascist. The cheat is the winner <laughs> oh, of this bro, episode. You fuckers. You'll never escape this fucking ghost. It's it's the, uh, the specter of Nintendo will wash upon your scenes. A thousand years curse. All right, let's see those locusts. We're going to eat them all. Uh, let's go to our fight on four side. Please stick with us as we get that set up. Hey, let's you and me grab that beer, Mario. Aye. We we did it, Reddit. Again. We won four side fights. Uh Jack, do you want Jack? How how are you, Jack? Oh my. How are yeah. you? Unprecedented fourth win. Yeah, it feels pretty good uh to avenge the Arizona Diamondbacks in this way. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Definitely. They were unable uh, to get anywhere near four. Yeah, no. <laughs> They, yeah, they uh, they couldn't put any points on the board, let alone Sorry. 80 plus. That happened to you. Yeah, you know what? It's it's part of what we've come to expect here in mm -hmm. the valley. Anything going on in your uh, melee world that you want to let the people know about? Oh, uh, melee world? I mean, I don't know. or life? Of, I don't know. One of these days, we're gonna get the four side fights regional. Um, yeah, pop in. Yep. I just need to find a suitable venue. There's always something, you know? There's always something wrong. There's always That's something wrong. That's why it's so wrong. hard when people are like, ah, they shouldn't have scheduled the week after. It's like, ah, you don't always have that many choices. Yeah, for real. If you anyone has any venue suggestions, any places that they've been to that, uh... We'll go anywhere. They thought, you know, this would make a good melee tournament for about 250 to 300 people. Connor, do you want me to, to mention that now? Connor, Connor's telling me to uh, drop a Sclusi, but I don't know if I'm actually... It. I want them to consider whether that's something they actually want me to do. Wow, you could have dropped a Sclusi. You could have won by even more. It's not, yeah. It's not really my Sclusi to drop. Yeah. Looking uh, pretty good here for uh, practical tasks, doing the classic, uh, you know thing that I did against these two players when we were playing doubles earlier or like free for all I guess it was is uh run away and don't do anything right if you can avoid it oh he's trying certainly to yeah free for all uh stock yeah I, you know I actually always thought that time was kind of better for free for alls yeah uh you know just because it's it incentivizes you, you have to kill people you know yeah uh okay I've been I it, I can hint at the Sclusi, uh, which is that an iteration of a, a certain outdoor-centric tournament uh, is going to be coming in 2024. Oh, uh, I thought that those outdoor tournaments were done forever. Oh, no. Oh, no. I of course not. Uh, but we're, we're probably going to announce it at, uh, like, Genesis Black, if we can get our shit together. Cool. So stay tuned for that one. We're always doing shit. I'm trying to get... A meeting going with you. We should meet if you got time tomorrow. I'll even talk about it. We could do a little little streamy and discuss. I'm oh, trying yeah, to get our new show going on the Four Side Fights Network. Um, yes. people, somebody, did you see somebody tweeted at me and was like, Jack, have you ever, have you guys, or Four Side Fights, have you ever thought about doing a show that's, and then it was exactly the show that I want to do yeah. and have been talking about <laughs> for months. <laughs> I did see that. <laughs> I was like, yep. Yeah, the people want it, I guess. Yeah, so we we must it. deliver. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, if we got one person asks us to make it. Oh wow, I can't believe that hit. <laughs> if one, it's like when the one person at Shine said that they like the TriCast, the same yeah. melee committee TriCast, and we just hold on to that. I think oh! uh, there's a lot of that going around in esports because all these friggin' uh, uh, tournament teams don't have anybody engaging with their content, and so when they get one, 
They're like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. you are you're the guy. Yeah. All right, it's getting to the end. Do you think this is the end of Mario? Mario playing DK because uh, Mario kind of owns DK since day one. He runs DK, yeah. He runs DK, yeah. <laughs> yeah, as as they say. Yeah, Crash what happens? If, what happens here if Mario gets last in the show and the fight? Do we? Do, okay, well there it is. I mean, it's hard to ban him because I didn't want him on the show to begin with. It was kind of a legal situation. Yeah. Do you want to pull him on the comms? Sure, yeah. Mario, what what the fuck happened? They're gonna get me, bro. I, I this is this is the last for me. What? Full disclosure, this was my uh my last chance before termination and I'm already I'm already getting the uh, the slack messages. Oh shit. It's it's looking bad. Are you like the Vorta in Deep Space Nine? <laughs> I don't have access to, to that kind of media. They were engineered by but. the founders of the Dominion to act as field commanders, and they had clones of each version of them, and if you fucked up, they just replaced you with your clone. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's spot on. No, I'm, I'm <laughs> going to be executed after this. This is... Next time Next time you hear from a guy like me, it's going to be, you know, all of all of my pain, all of my, my sin oh. and my sorrow, but... It'll be so a Mario, different guy. Mario does wear a red shirt after all. So. The winner of the fight yeah, they, on Foreside is Faust. Uh, congratulations, Faust, for winning the fight on Foreside. You are the king of the losers. And congratulations to Mikey for winning the pundit battle, the Foreside fights battle. I don't know the nomenclature here. I've been making it up every single time for every single episode. Thank you all for being here. We'll see you in two weeks. I'll give a little exclusive for the people who are tuning into this and made it all the way to the end. We got Oh, he's Zephyr? So we're going to have a very political episode coming in two weeks uh, to talk about the details on our feelings on copyright law. So we'll see you all then. Hope you had a good time. Bye. I can't wait.